discreet discreet or continuous can anybody tell me the difference between a, a variable that is discrete versus continuous or give me an example of one we use, use the try to give me the definition first can you tell me what discrete means a set, a set number, but uh, and what kind of a number? Well, a number can be any number, like 1.7, could be 3, could be negative 2.9, 999. It could be a whole number, uh, an, an integer, a positive integer. Discrete is countable by, by integers. So... Give me an example of, of, a, of a data set that's discrete. The number of books. The number of books on your desk. You can't have a half a book, right? So the number of books on your desk is discrete. So Continu whole number. Whole number. Any whole number. Continuous. Therefore, continuous can have fractions, decimals, any parts of numbers. All parts of numbers. If you think of a number line, the discrete are your whole numbers. The continuous is everything in between. Okay, so give me an example on Jada's desk of something that's continuous. Her pencil. Water. Her lead in her pencil. Yes, her bottle. water. Her amount of water in her water bottle. Right? Continuous. How does she just keep adding Keep what? Water. The water in her bottle? So does she have exactly one ounce or two ounce? No, she could have one and a half ounces, 1.3. If you can ask All yourself, okay. yeah, if you can ask yourself, can I do a half? Then you have continuous. Like a book, could I have a half of a book? No, that's discrete. So the piece of paper would be? So now be careful, not the, oh, the piece of paper itself? Yeah. yeah. Discrete. It's you're, discrete because you could rip it in half. You, well, no, you're counting your number. It depends what they say. The number of pages, okay. discrete. So, the number of pumps, discrete, discrete or continuous? Well, it says it's discrete, discrete, right? Discrete. discrete. How do you count the pumps? One, do you count a half a pump? No. The weight of a truck, continuous. continuous, because it could weigh a half a pound as well, right? Okay, probability distribution. You must know these two things. The probability, to be a probability distribution, this is like the relative frequency, it, it, all your probabilities must be between 0 and 1, inclusive. It could be 0, that means it's impossible to happen. It could be 1, that means it's always certain. And then you know we have one thing that occurs. But the sum of all your probabilities must also equal 1. So if I give you this probability distribution, and I ask you if this is a true probability distribution, first thing you're going to look at are all your probabilities. Are they between 0 and 1? Are any of them negative? If they're negative, then it's automatically a no. Can't have a negative probability. So yes, they fall between 0 and 1. And the sum. Is the sum equal to 1? You might need to put it in your calculator. Oh, or you can do it in your head. This is your review. Yeah. Oh, so yes? So if the sum is equal to 1, then therefore, yes, this is a probability distribution. Good. Oh, we, we weren't checking. We weren't checking binomial, just probability. The, the individual probabilities, these, have to be between 0 and 1. In other words, I could not have this. 1.09. I can't have 1.09. So you have no, not at all. Because then you say no. Can't be. Because it's done already. It's not 1 then. Right? Mm-hmm.
the probabilities must be between zero and one, and the sum must be one. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. It is from your book. So it's on page 225. So take a look at number six. And tell me if this is a probability distribution. Aaron said no. What do you see, Aaron? Ah, 27 over 20. Right away, isn't that greater than 1? Mm. Is it okay that they have all different denominators? Yes. Yes, that's okay, as long as they're, they're all between 0 and 1, and their sum would equal 1. But this guy picked us out. So that's what we stop. Can't think. The same thing if I have a negative. If I have a negative, right away, can't have a negative. Probabilities do not have no negative probability. I'm just trying to go through some good examples that pull together the last, because we, we kind of had that vacation break in between. So I kind of want to refresh your memory on these. Now, there's a probability distribution, and it doesn't matter if it's horizontal or it's vertical. X and Y cell phones and probabilities, whatever you want to call it, probably your X and your P of X is the best way to label them. But it doesn't really matter. If you like to look at it the vertical way, be my guest, just rearrange it. I have some kids that really don't like to look at it horizontally. I, you know, it took me a while myself because I was such a vertical person here. Yeah. And some kids really have a hard time seeing it. Mm -hmm, because you're used to your XY table. The, the statistic books has a, a, they do a lot of the horizontal ones. I think it takes less space in your book. It, and it really does. It, it kind of takes up less space than doing a long one. So either way you want to look at this is fine. How would I find the mean, the standard deviation, and the variance of this data set? Um, yes, I could, but do I know any of that? Do I know N or P? L1, L2. So, you had a good point there, Nick, because this is a nice, easy way to do this. But the problem is I don't have the exact pieces to fit in. But, like Jada says, I do have a table. So, L1, L2. Make sure you make sure you use L1, L2. Now your population mean and your sample mean are the same thing. So you're going to pull out your mean. And when they do this, they're asking for you can give them your population standard deviation. Because what's going to happen to your sample standard deviation in here? Anybody remember? If we use the probability one versus the frequency one. the sum of all your probabilities should be 1. So what happens in your sample is when you take the sum of all your differences, your squares, and you divide by n, when you do a sample one, it's n minus 1. What happens is if we're using your probability, then 1 minus 1 is 0. They will not calculate a sample one. When you're using your prob are you using your frequency? Yeah, it will. But not your probability one. Mm -hmm. So you don't get a sample standard deviation here. You'll get your population standard deviation. Rule of thumb. Hmm? Well, rule of thumb, your mean should be one more than your x value. One more decimal point. So if your cell phones are in whole numbers, discrete numbers, your mean should have how many decimal places? Yeah, one more decimal place than this. How many decimal places do these guys have? They have no decimal places, right? It wouldn't be here, like this, because they're discrete numbers. How do I count cell phones? By whole numbers, right? You have one cell phone, five cell phones. Okay, the mean should have one more. So in other words, 2 point, what is it? 2.8. So the same thing with the, oh, it says 3. No. Check again. 
to put the zero in? Check again. It should be 2.8. So the same thing with the overall statistics in the in the United States. People have 3.2.5 children. Did they ever have to have a child? That's for average. Okay, so now I know exactly what you did. So this is all right. Show me how you, how you did this, how you calculated it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what does that have to do? That'll do. What happens is, wait, 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 I'll get it to you one second. What happens is this. How did Nick get three? Nick got three because he only did L1. He took the average of this. So add them all up and divide by how many there are, the average is three. So if you don't put your L2 in there, it's not going to use this as a frequency. And who had a question? Jada? The SS equals... SS is your sample standard deviation. But you have don't have one in this case because your probabilities all add up to one. When we do your standard deviation, we divide by N for your population. We divide by n minus 1 for your sample. So the sum is 1. So it's saying 1 minus 1, I can't divide by 0. So it will not give you a sample standard deviation. If you did a frequency, then it will. Because then these are all adding up to, say, like 150 or 100 or something else. So we didn't even need to find a binomial distribution for that? No, no, no. All you had to do, this, all you had to do was this. And your standard deviation is about 1.7. How do you go back and find your variance? I got 1.3. 1. 1. 1.3. Oh, sorry, 1.3. Thank you. So now take, go to bears, go to stat, come down here, and square it. And that's your 1.7. I usually make my standard deviation go one more than my mean, but the book doesn't. The book aligns it. And and the reason being, when we go do confidence intervals, we keep them the same. So they kind of just keep theirs the same. So it's 1.7. 1.7. Okay? Okay. Expected value. expected value. We found that expected value is the same as your mean. So for us, what do you expect to happen? You expect the average thing to happen. So expected value happens to be your mean. And another way to do expected value is to kind of put out a chart. I find the chart easier than even doing anything else. So for instance, it costs $25 to bet on a horse race. Automatically you lay out $25 place your bet. The horse has a one-eighth chance of winning and a one-quarter chance of placing second or third. In here, combined really is one-fourth. You want to see, uh, you, you would win $125 if the horse wins and you get back your money, $25, if the horse places in second or third. This is first, second, third. This is you lost. <laughs> it's not a, it's not in your in your first three places. So they want to know overall what do you expect to gain? So they gave us the probabilities to use. So this was one eighth, this was one fourth for second, one fourth for third. If you add these up all your probabilities have to equal what? One. So if you add these up and subtract it from one, most of the time, five-eighths of the time, a little more than half of the time, you lose. Right? But that, no, that's normal. Like, say you have eight, race, eight horses to race or whatever, most of the time you don't win. Now, to figure out your net gain is, now don't forget you already bet $25. 
If you bet $25 and you won $125, what did you really win? $100. One eighth of the time. If you bet $25 and you got your money back, what did you actually gain? Nothing. You broke even, right? You gained zero. Same thing with the third place. You gained zero. But in all other cases, you lose. You lost your $25. So the first one is to lay out your net gain. This is always a hard concept. So we lay out our net gain. We put in our probability. And then all you do is you can do L1, L2, or you can do this by hand. 100 times 1 eighth plus 0 times 1 fourth. And you don't have to do it twice if you don't want to minus 25 times 5 eighths. If you wanted to, you could do L1, L2, because your mean is also your expected value. So it doesn't matter which way you go with it. If it's only like four entries, it's probably easier just to, to string them out. Overall, you will end up losing $3.13. Expected value, overall. You're most of the time, more than half of the time, you're losing. The important part is this piece right here. This is your gain or loss. Don't forget that $25, we said it. So if you win $125, you technically didn't win that. You only won $100 because you already bet your $25. Does that reduce our Up, uh, yes. Moving on, I wanted to make a, a, a binomial distribution chart. Um, take a look at number 11. I just want to know if this is a binomial distribution or not. To be a binomial distribution, what are the four things that have to happen? To be binomial, what is bi? Two. So you have to have two choices. Two choices. A success or a failure. Remember we count our successes. Didn't you tell me we count our successes? By your variable. And what did you say about the probability? They have to be what? They can't be changed. The probabilities are fixed. We're going to do this a certain amount of time and trial. And your random variable, your random variable must represent all the trials, zero to n. So let's pull this out, see what we have. We have bags of milk chocolate M&Ms. They contain 24% blue candy. One candy is selected from each one of the 12 bags. The random variable represents the number of blue candies selected. How many bags do we have? Twelve. So what is our trial? Twelve. What is your probability of getting a blue? Twenty-four. Is that going to change? You're only picking one candy from each bag. So it's not going to change. I'm going to do this for twelve bags. So this one may word it a little bit differently. I'm not going back into the same bag ever. I'm using twelve different bags. I'm not repeating this experiment from the same bag. Okay? And my random variable will be from 0 to 12. Right? I could get 0 blue, 1 blue, 2 blue, 12 blue. So is this binomial? Yes. I get a blue, or I don't get a blue. Two choices. So this one I like because they worded this a little bit differently. Normally, if it came from the same bag, would that be a binomial distribution? No, because what happens if it's from the same bag? Not so it's not fixed. Your probability will change. So do you see the difference for this one? Kind of a nice one. From each of the 12 bags. They never go back into the same bag. 
So what would you have to do? That you, you pick one from each one and then you look at them? That you have zero blues, that you have one blue, that you have 12 blues. A little different than picking from one bag. All right, number 15. Number 15 says 43% of businesses in the United States requires a doctor's note when an employee takes sick time. You randomly select nine business uh, nine businesses. Find the probability that the number of businesses who say they require a doctor's note is exactly five, at least at, at most five, at least five, and more than five. So we're going to set up your binomial chart for this one. Work this out with me. The probability that you that you take sick a sick day is forty three because forty three percent of the businesses in the United States require a doctor's note. So what is that probability? Remember, sometimes they write it in words. You gotta just make sure you pull out the numbers. They're gonna ask nine businesses. Your random variable zero through nine. How do I find my probability? In your calculator, what should I do? Uh, second, second, there. A, binomial PDF. Make sure you use the P. This stands for binomial probability distribution function. I want number of trials. I want my P. And I want to start at the zero. And if you're using the old calculators, it's very easy. It's in alphabetical order. N T S. 9.43, start at the zero. And paste that in. From one through nine. Can everybody do that? At least start doing some of them. Try some of them. You need this chart to be able to answer the question. Now, this one says 5, <coughs> excuse me, e to the negative 4, if it comes out like that, probabilities are between 0 and 1. So this should tell you this is a scientific notation number. If you put a 5, it is wrong. At this point, you should be realizing that that can't be possible. That's your scientific notation number. Move your decimal four positions to the right. <laughs> My board is so wrong. Okay, so now, if we're going to do exactly five, exactly five, my probability of exactly five is 0.196. My probability of at least five, which ones do I want? If you have at least five dollars in your pocket, five and up. Take money in your pocket. Five and up. I take okay. these. I add them together. Five and up. Then, you want your probability that it's more than five. So six and up. So instead of just adding these, what could I do? Subtract. I could take this total and subtract the one that I don't want. Or you could add up the four. If you use your chart and you lay it out on your chart, it actually makes more sense than reading at least five, more than five, less than five. It'll make more sense to you. Okay? Well, this is what your test is on, yes? Now, this one, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to make your binomials. Don't pack it up yet, guys. You're going to pack it up, but you're going to make a graph. 
Let me just talk about the graph for a minute. Okay, remember the graph of your probability distribution? It just damage your relative frequency. It needs a title. It needs your probability. It needs your x value. All of your values have to go down here. And here is your money. From 0 to 35 cents. And then you're going to make your bars. Okay, you're going to make your bars. Your bars are going to touch and so forth. Okay? Probability distribution is your relative frequency. Yes. And I want you to get one more real fast, number 20. And maybe you could just do number 20 for, for homework. Is you using your formulas? Okay, now here's my problem. I'm hoping tomorrow, tomorrow 